Greetings, everyone. I want to talk in this video about the upcoming new moon on February 9th, where the sun and moon will both be in the sign of Aquarius. As I'm recording this video, it is the time of the midpoint between the solstice and the upcoming equinox. For ancient cultures, these cross-quarter holidays between the solstices and the equinoxes were very powerful times. In old Europe, this was known as imbolc, the time of divination, the time to tune in to the energies of this upcoming year and what we're meant to be attuning to and what we're meant to bring into growth and manifestation in our lives. So let's hold that awareness of this powerful time of this midpoint between the solstice and the equinox, this time when we feel the shifting of the light, whether we're in the Northern Hemisphere or the Southern Hemisphere. So honor that energy as we move into talking about the powerful energies of this new moon. And let me show you the chart. So as you can see, the sun and moon are at 20 degrees of Aquarius. And what I want to focus on in terms of the energies of this new moon is particularly the square with Uranus at 19 degrees of Taurus. But before we talk about that more in depth, let me point out some of the other energies of this new moon. We continue to have Chiron conjunct the North Node and now sextiling the sun and moon. So there's an ongoing theme of the importance of our healing, healing our sense of self, Aries, healing what needs to heal from the past in terms of the out-of-balanced energies of the age of Aries. It's also significant that at the time of this new moon, Chericlo, that other healing centaur, is at 13 degrees of Aquarius conjunct the sun and moon, supporting us in holding that healing energy within ourselves for ourselves in terms of what we're dealing with emotionally. This is a powerful new moon in that we have a stellium in Aquarius, sun, moon, Chericlo, Mercury, Pluto, all in the sign of Aquarius. So we've come out of that lunar cycle in January with the new moon and full moon very engaged with the energy of Pluto, transformation, coming out of the paradigms of the past to begin to dream into being these paradigms of the Aquarian age. And now this lunar cycle is activating even more strongly our attuning to feeling, moving into these Aquarian energies that are about truth and justice, coming back into balance and harmony, moving beyond polarization into that remembrance of our interconnectedness. So that is powerfully activated by the stellium in Aquarius, with Mercury now in Aquarius supporting us in more fully opening to these paradigms of the Aquarian age and how we can be thinking in new ways. Pluto empowering us, guiding us to be dreaming these new forms into being. Remember that how we work with the energies of the times is very tied to our level of consciousness and therefore the frequency or the level at which we work these energies. In particular, that's important when we're working with the energies of the outermost planets. Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto are those transpersonal planets that connect us to energies that are larger than ourselves and that are calling us into transformation. 
Pluto in particular is that planet of alchemy, helping us to burn away what no longer serves us, to be in the true gold of who we are. Pluto is now in an out-of-sign conjunction with Mars. And remember that Pluto is known as the higher octave of Mars. So when we're working this powerful conjunction consciously, it's a call to align our will, Mars, our ways of acting and channeling our energy, Mars, to align our will with divine will, with the will of the cosmos, with higher consciousness, Pluto. So if we work this conjunction consciously, it's supporting us in moving beyond our ego, beyond our sense of separate self, to be aligning our will and our actions with this transfer, transformational energy of Pluto guiding us into the Aquarian age, guiding us into co-creating with the cosmos these new ways of being, guiding us to move out of the out-of-balanced ways of working with Mars energy, coming out of the shadow aspects of the age of Aries that are about competition, power over, conquest, control, to be now, how do I align my will with the energies of the earth and sky and cosmos to be moving into these new paradigms. If, however, we don't work that combination consciously, and we're seeing that polarization on the planet now, we're seeing this accelerated process of those of us who are awakening and moving into higher consciousness, but we're also seeing the backlash and the effort by some to cling to the patterns of the past and to cling to those patriarchal paradigms of power over and control. And this combination can accentuate that and play out in terms of increasing efforts for power over or for violence or for abuse of power. So we may see both aspects of this conjunction playing out at the time of this new moon. But remember that what's important for those of us who are working with these energies consciously is to keep energizing that higher timeline of what we're capable of as humanity if we work with these energies at their deepest archetypal level and at that level of higher consciousness. Then we can be supporting the transformation on the planet out of those abusive power over dynamics and into the alignment of our will with the energies and wisdom of cosmic consciousness. So this is a very important configuration in this new moon. And it's interesting that Venus is also in Capricorn and is now squaring the lunar nodes. So supporting us and looking at not only our actions, but how are we in relationship and is it in balance? Is it in right relationship in order to move into these new forms? It's also significant at the time of this new moon that Neptune is squaring the galactic center, supporting us in, again, dissolving our ego to open to that spiritual consciousness, Neptune and Pisces, that remembrance of our oneness with all that is, supporting us in expanding our intuition, our inner connection to our soul self, to be aligning with source, with this wisdom of the cosmos. But again, the aspect that I think is most significant in this new moon is Uranus squaring the sun and moon. So this 
is going to be a very Uranian time at the outset of this lunar cycle. And remember that Uranus is the planet that is the higher octave of Mercury. So when we're working with the deeper meaning of Uranus and its archetypal energy, it is our connection to divine mind, to cosmic consciousness. It's supporting us in not thinking from our human understanding and mind, but opening to the energies of cosmic consciousness. When Uranus is strong in a birth chart, in a strong aspect of the sun or moon or ascendant, it's indicating someone who carries that energy very strongly. And again, if we're opening to those energies and how they can move in us and through us, Uranus is the planet that is about truth, that is about justice. It cuts through illusion to give us clarity, to support us in seeing things from that transpersonal perspective, from higher mind, from that perspective of cosmic consciousness, that perspective of our soul selves. So when it's strong in a birth chart, it's often a, an indicator of someone who has gifts in channeling, that capacity to open to messages coming from the divine, coming from cosmic consciousness, to bring them through, to be a messenger of that wisdom. It's also strong in the charts of activists and innovators and pioneers who are tapping into these new ways of seeing and thinking to be moving in directions that are allowing us to move into truth, into justice, into innovative ways of being. So as we work with this energy of Uranus squaring the new moon, it's supporting us in getting clarity about what we need to release to be in truth, what we need to let go of in order to move more into justice and into these Aquarian paradigms. Remember that Uranus is the modern ruler of Aquarius. So it's activating this new moon and this whole stellium in Aquarius to support us in seeing more and more clearly how we can set ourselves free from the patterns of the past, open to truth and justice and innovation and new forms as we move into the Aquarian age. I do believe that this energetic can also help us as humanity to see more clearly what's been hidden in the shadows, to remember that Uranus also cuts through allusion to the heart of what is going on. So it may be a time where we're seeing more and more clearly some of the paradigms that we've been caught in politically with the media in other ways that are out of balance, that are not about truth, that are not about justice. So Uranus is guiding us in seeing things more clearly and tapping into these higher ways of knowing. Just like Pluto has its shadow side, Uranus has its shadow side if it's not worked consciously. And particularly when it's in strong aspects to the sun or moon in a birth chart, Uranus can manifest as narcissism or grandiosity, where the person's ego attaches to that transpersonal energy and then at some level believes not that I can be a messenger of cosmic consciousness, I can be a channeler of divine mind, but I am divine mind. And then it can lead to imbalance and it can lead to grandiosity and that power over dynamic of narcissism. And we see that playing out in the world with some of the leaders in our world in this time. 
So again, it's very important that we work with these energies from a place of higher consciousness and not play out the shadow aspects of them, which in this case is either about narcissism and grandiosity or disruption for disruption's sake. It can be about shattering structures and systems for the sake of shattering them, whereas Uranus is actually, as it's symbolized in the Tower card in the Tarot deck, it's meant to shatter what's out of balance to bring us back into right alignment with truth, with natural law, particularly in Taurus, with right relationship with the earth, with right relationship with the sky, with justice. So I encourage you at the time of this new moon, look at where the sun and moon are in your chart. Look at where Uranus is. What house is it in? And in being in the sign of Taurus, it's helping you also attune to that divine wisdom and knowing through our connection with nature, through staying grounded in our relationship with the earth and the remembrance of natural law, how to honor the sacredness of all of the life around us and be in right relationship. Look at where that lands in your chart and what house these energies are in and how that's guiding you to connect with them in your unique way at this time. And again, if you don't have a copy of your birth chart, feel free to download one for free from astro.com, where I also highly encourage you to download some of the videos on Pam Gregory's website and I'll include that link below that support you in looking at how to find these points in your own chart. But let's look now at where this these energies are in the sky at the time of this new moon. So while the sun and moon in the chart are in the sign of Aquarius, in the sky, they're here in the stars of Capricornus, the goat fish. And Uranus is in this powerful configuration in the sky between Cetus the whale and Perseus the warrior. What's very powerful about this Uranus placement is this is also where Uranus will be when we move into that full conjunction of Uranus and Jupiter on April 20th. And from March 20th to May 20th, they will be within a five degree orb of each other here in the middle of this powerful part of, of the sky, the dynamic between Cetus the whale and Perseus the warrior, which is, as I've talked about in previous videos, is very much about how do we move beyond polarization, beyond the conflict between the masculine energies and sacred feminine out of that power over dynamic and that polarization of us versus them, of conflict, of conquest, where here you have the warrior trying to slay the sea monster, Cetus the whale. How do we come back into harmony between the sacred masculine and the sacred feminine. Uranus is giving us that clarity to see how we can break out of the polarization, come back into integration, come back into the truth of the balancing and reweaving of the sacred masculine and the sacred feminine, come into these new ways of seeing and new ways of thinking and being that are about unity consciousness and healing and coming into connection with each other and collaboration with each other, coming into truth and justice and right relationship. I think it's very significant that Uranus is so prominent in the chart of this new moon. And the meaning of the Sabian symbol of 19 degrees of Taurus, where Uranus is at the time of this new moon, is about a willingness to participate with unseen 
spiritual forces. Are we, as we're moving into this Aquarian age, willing to open to the energies of divine mind, willing to open to this wisdom of the cosmic consciousness that can come to us and through us and is within us? Are we willing to let go of ego and to align our soul self with the consciousness and wisdom of the cosmos, to be participating with these spiritual energies that are in us and beyond us, to be moving through this profound, accelerated time of transformation on the planet. This is the start of a new processional cycle. This is a time of movement into the age of Aquarius. This is a profound time of earth changes and shifts in our human consciousness. And what I think is extremely significant about this particular time on the planet is that we've never been in this level of shift, of possibility of an evolutionary leap into moving from being homo sapiens into homo luminous ones, into moving into the new consciousness and way of being beings of light and co-creating with each other and with the cosmic energies to co-create a new earth together, a new world together. So this is a profound time for us to open to these Uranian energies that can help us shatter and set ourselves free from patterns that no longer serve us, to be in alignment with truth, our inner truth, our soul self, and in alignment with the wisdom of the earth and sky and cosmic consciousness. So I encourage you to attune to the energy of Uranus and what guidance Uranus has for you in this time. What is the message that Uranus is bringing to you personally to support you in opening to that wisdom from cosmic consciousness? And to support you and us in that, I would like to do a guided meditation that helps us connect with Uranus, to help, help us each open to that wisdom that's there for us. Clearly, Uranus is speaking to us collectively, but this planet is also speaking to each of us individually and guiding us to see where we need to break free from patterns from the past, to be in the truth of who we are, to dare to move in new directions that are fostering truth and justice and higher consciousness. So may this meditation be helpful for you and may we continue to open to these transpersonal energies together to support each other in this time of transition and transmutation on the planet, to be supporting the collective consciousness in awakening to these new ways of being. As we move into meditation together to attune to the wisdom of Uranus for us in this time. Allow yourself to close your eyes and begin to breathe in and out slowly and deeply. Feel your feet on the ground. And this is very important when we connect with Uranus to stay grounded, stay connected to the earth. Uranus is that energy of higher consciousness. It connects us to our crown chakra. And it is the energy of truth that is like the energy of electricity 
that can activate that higher consciousness and knowing within us. But we need to ground that and stay in balance with that by being very connected to the earth and to be strong in our root chakra to support us in integrating those energies of higher consciousness. So feel your feet on the ground and visualize roots going from your feet deep into the earth. Feel your connection with the earth. Allow her to ground you, to support you, to allow you to take in these energies of Uranus, but let them flow through you, and to allow whatever energies need to be released into the earth to go into the earth. Feel your connection with the earth and draw in that energy of the earth through those roots into your body, letting that fill you and support you and ground you. And now as you continue to breathe in and out slowly and deeply, we are going to connect to the energies of Uranus. Allow yourself to open your crown chakra to the sky and ask to connect to the energies of Uranus and the messages or wisdom that Uranus has for you in this time. As you open your connection to the sky and to these energies, feel your alignment with your feet rooted to the earth and your crown chakra opening to the sky. Feel yourself in alignment with your soul self, with your higher self and your deep connection with the earth and the sky. And now as we connect to the energies of Uranus and ask this planet for its wisdom, for its guidance, for each of us in this time. I'm going to allow you to listen to the song, The Sound of Uranus, the recordings of the solar winds that move around this planet to help you attune to the voice, the song of this planet. Allow yourself to take that in, to listen to it, to begin to feel the energy of Uranus filling you, guiding you, teaching you, bringing its truth and messages to you. So take a few minutes just to breathe in and connect with this planet and listen to the song of Uranus. And then we will continue our meditation.
as you have now listened to the voice of Uranus, to its energy, to its song. Allow yourself now to open to what guidance this planet has for you in this moment, in this time. Honor the energy of Uranus and ask Uranus to activate in you your own inner knowing to bring you whatever message you need in this time. Ask Uranus to give you clarity, to guide you in connecting more with the truth of who you are and who you're meant to be and who you are becoming in this time of transition and transformation. Take some time now to open to a tune to Uranus and to that guidance that's there for you. Allow yourself as you meditate to open to whatever messages come to you or whatever visions or whatever guidance comes to you in your own way. Allow yourself to take that in and attune now to the wisdom of divine mind, to the higher consciousness within you and your alignment with the consciousness of the cosmos. Allow yourself to open to those messages that are there for you. And now honor whatever your experience was, whatever guidance came to you. Give thanks to Uranus. And now bring your energy back from the sky, back in to your body. Focus again on your connection to the earth, grounding you, supporting you, helping you to integrate these energies and messages from Uranus. And if nothing clear came to you in this meditation, know that you can come back to it again. And also know that Uranus is in you supporting you, even if your mind can't discern the message. That as you open to the energies of higher consciousness. It is guiding you, shaping you, supporting you, and showing you next steps through synchronistic experiences or through ways in which you get these flashes of knowing or hear your own inner guidance. Trust that Uranus is there for you supporting you as you move into these new ways of being, supporting you as you are healing and awakening and moving into these Aquarian paradigms. Give thanks to Uranus 
give thanks to the earth for grounding you, guiding you, supporting you. Let us give thanks to each other and our connections with each other and with this web of light workers around the globe. And now allow yourself to come back into this present moment and to integrate all the gifts that you've received from the earth and sky. Take time to journal. Take time to integrate what you've experienced and know that you will continue to feel guided and supported as we move through this powerful lunar cycle. Blessed be.